Today, I'm taking a look at this classic mid-80s Vader-style Atari 2600. We're going to clean it up, make it look beautiful, and give it a composite output mod so we can play it on a modern display. I've had a couple of Atari 2600s just sitting around and waiting patiently for some repair and restoration work. The one I'm going to work on today is this all black Vader model, so called because it resembles Darth Vader's helmet. This style of Atari 2600 was produced between 1982 and 1985. Now the main thing I'm going to do is convert it from an RF modulated video and audio signal over to a composite video signal with a separate audio channel. And as you can see, this unit is quite dirty, so we're going to give it a good cleaning as well. To get started, we first need to open it up. So that requires taking out a few screws from underneath. And we do need to get under this EMI shielding, so we'll twist these tabs and remove that as well. You'll notice that we have three chips. This here is the Atari's 6507 processor. And this is the Riot chip. You'll notice that there are no dedicated RAM chips on board. So this chip provides the RAM and manages part of the controller I.O. in a single package. And this is the television interface adapter, which is better known as the TIA chip. It's the chip responsible for producing both the audio and video signal so it's the one we want to focus on for our composite mod. Now if you look at the TIA chip, you'll see that the audio and video signal come out of the chip and are combined together. From there, the signal is fed into the RF modulator, which modulates it so it can be picked up on either channel 2 or channel 3 on the TV. So what we need to do is first separate the audio and video signal. If we don't do this step, the video signal will be noisy and unclear. After that, we need to take the RF modulator out of the picture and replace it with a video amplifier circuit. And finally, we need to output both the video and audio signals to an external connector that we can plug into our display. All right, so to figure out how to separate the audio and video, the best place to turn is to the Atari 2600 schematic. The Atari I'm modding today is the CX2600A model. So that's the version of the schematic we're looking at here. So here's the TIA chip. And you'll notice two audio lines coming out of the TIA, which are summed together, fed into this audio adjustment circuit, and then combined with the video signal. So to separate the audio, the easiest approach would be to just clip one of the legs of this 1.8 kilo ohm resistor, R209. And when looking at the board, R209 is right here. Okay, next we need an amplifier circuit that increases the amount of current coming from the video signal. Notice I said current, not voltage. An easy way to do this is to use a simple NPN transistor and build what's called an emitter follower amplifier. I walked through this circuit in my Atari 7800 video, so I won't go into too much depth here, but I will point out a couple of things. First, you'll notice that the video signal from the TIA is fed into the base of the transistor. This is the signal that we're amplifying. Next, notice that we're grabbing the amplified signal off the emitter, which is being pulled down to ground. This is what causes the current in the output signal to be amplified. If we were to pull the signal from the collector pin instead, that would have given us an amplified voltage, which is not what we want here since the TIA already outputs the proper NTSC voltage levels. Finally, these resistors form a voltage divider that adds a little extra voltage to the input signal. The reason we do this is because the transistor causes a voltage drop. So this bumps the voltage up a tad to compensate for that drop. Now, if you want to understand this circuit a little more, Go check out my Atari 7800 composite mod video. In that video, I hooked the circuit up to my multimeter and oscilloscope, 
and walk through the effects of each step of this circuit as I built it out. To do this mod, we're going to need just a few components. First, a 2N3904 NPN transistor, a 3.5mm audio jack, a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor, a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor, and of course, our perf board. For mounting, I thought we'd just use a header directly into the pins that the RF modulator was using, and then use these angled pins to connect our board. I trimmed down the header because we don't need to connect all five of these pins. And I snipped off four angled pins for the board. The perforated board was just a bit too big, so I trimmed that down as well. To do this, I carefully scored the board with an X-Acto knife, and then just snapped it in two at the score mark. I then filed down the rough edges that were left over. Next, I soldered the female header to the board, but you'll notice that I skipped the last pin. Then it was time to mount the angled pin connector to the perf board. Before moving forward, I did a quick test fit just to make sure it wasn't going to stick out too much. I realized then that I probably should shorten the board since there needs to be room for the 3.5mm audio cable. So I trimmed the board down just a little bit more. I then mounted and soldered the 3.5mm audio jack to the end of the board opposite the pins. Next I inserted the 2N3904 transistor. The base and collector connect directly to pins 3 and 4 of the pin header. So I just bent the legs down and soldered them directly to those pins. I then soldered the emitter to one of the outputs on the 3.5mm jack. I just used the scrap pin that I pulled out from the connector earlier as a conductor. Then I soldered in place the 2.2 kilo ohm resistor. One leg goes to the base pin and the other to 5 volts. And then the 3.3 kilo ohm resistor, one leg into base, and the other to ground. The 3.5 millimeter jack needs to be grounded, so I used a piece of wire to bodge it to the ground pin. I love using silicon wire for this type of thing, because it's just so easy to pinch off the insulator and to work with it. And finally, there needs to be a wire for the audio. So I soldered one end, to the 3.5 millimeter jack, and the other end goes to this capacitor here, which is C208. Well, all right, we're all done. But before putting this Atari back together, I think it needs a good cleaning. So let's go to the sink and wash it up. We're just going to give each piece a gentle scrubbing with some warm soapy water. And before we put it back together, 
We'll add some deoxit to these switches to keep them performing well. Well, I have to say this turned out really nice. The system cleaned up well, and despite a blemish or two, it looks really good. But you know, we're not really done until we've verified that it works. So I hook the Atari up to my RetroTink 5X and an external monitor. And we'll start off with a game of Centipede. Well, Centipede looked really good. So let's move on to Berserk. Berserk looks great too. So next, let's try out a game of Dig Dug. And finally, let's round it off with Pac-Man. Well, all right, that was a lot of fun. It's always rewarding restoring a piece like this to its former glory. Well, as for this four switch Woody model, well, don't worry about him, because we're gonna come back and take care of this guy in a future video. I hope you enjoyed this video and hope that you got something out of it today. And maybe you got the itch to go crawl around your parents' attic and find your old Atari to mod. If you did, leave a comment below and let me know how it worked out for you. All right, that's it for today. I'll see you next time. But until then, go make something cool.